Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you a shoutcast in Game 2 in what I expect to be a best of 3 matchup here between Empire Kaz and Stefano um, here on Tall Dream Altars. So here we have Kaz spawning as the blue Terran player here at the bottom right hand side of the map. Meanwhile Stefano spawning on the top left hand side as the pink Zerg. So this is going to um, be Zerg versus Terran here on Tall Dream Altar. Currently Kaz has a one to nothing lead. And Stefano trying to avenge his fallen comrade, um, part of Team Millennium, Lu uh, Adele losing in a two or a best of three series straight to nothing. So we'll see if Stefano will fall to Kaz to nothing once again, or just like his teammate, or if he will be able to force a game three and perhaps avenge his fallen comrade. Anyways, I am going to go ahead and pull up the production tab. Now, Tall Dream Altar is one of those maps where I think it really favors um, a lot of Terran style of play. Um, Stefano is definitely going to benefit from the fact that this is cross spawn, and because it is cross spawn, it's going to be a little bit more difficult in order to set up this or set up siege tanks along here. One of the reasons why I say this is a Terran favored map is t siege tanks from the low ground with pretty much deadly accuracy are able to snipe down, get some of those drones, and perhaps even um, then start elevator dropping some units onto the high ground to try to snipe down this hatchery over here. Stefano already coming over and now growing up to be a hatchery, a very early hatchery, a 14 hatchery here on Tall Dream Altar. Meanwhile, we already have a barracks being built over here, and the larger the map, the more it does turn into a macro style of play especially as Stefano already heading out with two overlords in order to try to scout and find out his find his opponent. No, only scouting out with one. It would be very suicidal of this overlord to try to make its way all the way across the map here as a marine would easily be able to chase it down and shoot it out of the sky. Now, the interesting thing that we're seeing from Kaz is that Kaz is most likely going to be opening up with a command center of his own. So getting a command center of his own will definitely help him out as he will be able to keep up in the economic game. It does cost a little bit more minerals. The command center costing 400 minerals as opposed to 350 if you include the drone in the cost. So that is the reason why it is a little bit delayed. Also, making sure to get this barracks out early just in case his opponent does try to go some sneaky sort of play and try to six pool I would not imagine that to be the case as the overlord does in fact see the SCV coming over here and most likely knows that his opponent has in fact spawned over here based upon the movements of this one scouting SCV drones now making their way over here and now we are going to be getting a spot or a spine crawler here not a sunken colony a spine crawler here um, at the front door and it will be able to protect against any early aggression drones most likely going to be trained over here in just a moment as well we are getting two queens so those queens are also going to be able to do a lot of damage towards any early marines as well one of the reason reasons why early marines don't work against zerg especially on this map is that the queen can come out and get a lot of damage a queen with a spine crawler and a couple zerglings more than enough to fend off an even food of marines We're trying to put pressure on that front door the queen gonna take some damage and oh that spine crawler getting off one hit but the scv able to escape with four hit points scv gonna be able to go back and mine again another day now as these players are playing this map they're going to be thinking um, generally and um, this is a very large macro map most likely my opponent is ha are, I know that Stefano already has an expansion up so Kaz is now even with expansion so he has to be pretty happy with himself as well both players just getting minimal defense to be able to fend off any aggression and now Kaz going into that factory style of play and now also getting some barracks down over here as well in order to make sure that this front door is essentially completely sealed the only thing that can really put pressure on this front door would be um, would be roaches but now that uh, supply depots are being built over here as well the marines going to be able to protect this ramp just a little bit roaches would have to come along this far side and roaches most likely will not even bother to be trained um it would be actually very interesting to see what it would look like if someone did a spine crawler rush here on Tall Dream Altar, because you can build. Oh, excuse me, as I accidentally move that, you can build a hatchery, and then as you build a hatchery, you can cancel it, put down a creep tumor in that one spot, and then eventually start building spine crawlers. Spine crawlers do have a range of seven, so they do are able to deal a significant uh, a portion of damage as they're out, also able to outrange a bunker with marines. But um, I do digress. That most likely will not happen. 
unless um, I unless I predict a crazy crazy matchup, and that would absolutely be one of the best cheese plays of all time. So Stefano sitting here with double spine crawlers on his front door, clearing out these sets of destructible rocks, and you're gonna see both players just continue to power drone and try to get a very strong economy going. Additional queen is being trained at uh, one of the two hatcheries, the other one growing up to be a layer. So we may be getting some mutilus into play, and that will work out especially well as if this uh, one set of destructible rocks gets taken down and he's able to mine off of two additional Vespian geysers. I believe that comes to about 700 gas a minute. And at 700 gas a minute, you are able to get a lot of gas and a lot and reach critical mass on Mutilus relatively early. And especially with a map like this with such a large walking distance and so many cliffs, Mutilus um, are potentially very, very dangerous. We'll see if Kaz responds with only Marines or if he'll even try to throw in some Thors into this combination. We already seen Medivax, Marines, and Siege Tanks currently being trained. It is the um, standard um, one barracks, one starport, one factory inside the base. We do have that double barracks over here on that front door as that stim pack is now nearing completion. Zergling still trying to destroy these rocks over here as now the Spire is coming into play. So that is should that should be about 480 gas a minute, 448, 480 dancing back and forth between that. And as these Zerglings finish off the set of Destructible Rocks, I'm assuming a Hatchery will quickly be placed down based upon the Harvester count and the continued power droning of Stefano. And um, Kaz, on the other hand, still training up more Marines, more Siege Tanks, and getting that Stim Pack army-wise. 14 or 2,000 versus 425. That I know that looks like a very, very... Um, very very surprising number that Kaz could easily be able to move out but you have to also remember that the Banelings are already down so this group of what 15 Zerglings can easily morph into a lot of Banelings and those Banelings dealing a lot of splash damage and essentially melting Marines um, should be able to counteract this Marine heavy army there are two siege tanks involved and now Kaz looks like he is trying to set up for this um, cliff positioning over here there is one spine crawler a second spine crawler are also coming into position as well and this is going to be very interesting that the siege tanks actually get too close and blindly siege those spine crawlers are going to be able to get six to eight seconds of free attacks onto those siege tanks before those siege tanks are able to fight back so as is that going to be the case the medevacs are already in position there you go already taking some stabs there siege tank is getting blindly attacked zergling is now coming in baneling is now coming in as well and oh one siege tank down two siege tanks down and there you go and um, there is the Zerglings now on that high ground. Marines now trying to come in over here. The Banelings now going to run in. And oh, picked up. A very, very nice hot pickup there. And now dropping in once more. Trying to take out that one spine crawler. It does do a good job there. And now the Zerglings are going to be split between the high ground and the low ground. Taking down some of those using units over there. As the Queen, for some reason, not getting involved in the fight. Zerglings now finally coming back over. Going to do a nice surround. They are now going to be hot picked up once again. But the losses are significantly higher for Kaz. The Marines on the low ground don't have enough range to fight back. And now those Marines are just going to be forced to just try to dance around even further. Drones are being transferred to a new expansion location. Does Kaz spot this? Or is Kaz just trying to activate this Onaga Watchtower? Oh, what a big, big gambit by Stefano. Stefano now getting off a of four base play compared to his opponents too. And a new fresh round of Marines and Siege Tanks on the move once more. Zerglings quickly swarming around this El Naga Watchtower. And one Zergling activating this El Naga Watchtower as well. And now, Stefano knows that he does have the economic advantage and uh, mining off of more mineral patches, getting more gas as well as these units are now trying to once again rinse and repeat, trying to do that same exact strategy. But there is 14 banelings. 14 banelings is 75 resources um, worth of units there as the Mutal is now going to be coming into play. Zergling is now trying to come in. Zergling is uh, surrounding over here. Mutal is now going after those siege tanks. Siege tanks going to have a very difficult day as the Mutal is uh, able to tear them apart. The Marines were not close by enough. And Stefano doing a great job and now going to clean up multiple medevacs as these medevacs have nowhere to run. The Mutal is far, far out... Um, outmaneuver more than 50% faster or actually exactly 50% faster than those units 3.75 versus 3.25 and now or 2.2.5 um, as those zerglings may oh get uh, a pop shotted once more zerglings now it's coming in the surround and swarm there you go one banding doing a nice melting job there 
and Stefano still continuing his lead. He has the economic advantage, he has the losses advantage, and Kaz not looking like himself. He does have a planetary fortress over here, and Kaz may be thinking, okay, I'm up to three bases, I'm good. But no, that is not the case as Stefano now sitting on four bases with 67 drones. Production still training up more drones. And as this creep highway continues to spread, the units will be coming in even more quickly. More Mutilus level 1 weapons upgrade now coming in army-wise. 20 or what? A total of 4,000 versus 2,250. But there is a missile turret nearby. Siege tanks and marines coming over. The Overlord going to get shot down there. But that one dead overlord um, at least alerted Stefano that his army would not be good or it would not be a smart move to try to engage at that time. Level 1 armor upgrades, not yet level 1 weapons upgrade. And that is important, but Stefano's window to attack against those siege tanks is slowly going to diminish. As those siege tanks with level 1 weapons upgrade currently being researched will soon be able to get down and take down, um, or be able to one-shot those Zerglings. They can already one-shot those Banelings. As Kaz now playing a very, very um, dangerous game of chicken with these units so far. There are some supply depots here, so that is going to absorb some of that damage from um, any of those Banelings if they try to do a Baneling bust there. And the Mutilus now once again in full retreat and now the Zerglings is now going to swarm in once more Zerglings trying to pull back and now the Marines all a lot of damage being dealt across so many Marines one stim pack across what 20 almost 48 Marines what is that 44 Marines so essentially 440 damage dealt for absolutely nothing um, that is a significant amount of damage there Medivacs, not enough to really support this sheer number of Marines you can see that one Medivac trying to heal up everyone but not going to be able to do so it will quickly run out of energy as currently Stefano still running off of a, a, a powerful eight gas play sitting at about 900 gas and that means he's going to be able to get what almost nine to ten mutilists a minute even once he hits that a very very powerful food cap almost sitting at 200 food now as gas is still easily going into their into that system how many ha hatcheries do have eight larvas still but multiple oh no spawn larva so Stefano laxing a little bit in terms of his macro um, he needs to get more spawn larva down in order to make sure that he doesn't slow down his production oh that queen looked like he wanted the spawn larva but forgot to as the mutal is now going to come in along that far side there is one missile turret here the auto track uh, auto sec tracking not being researched at all I'm um, so so much trouble in the world go go I do not know why Stefano um, joking about Power Rangers in this battle so far as the as Zerglings, Bandings, and Mutilus are on the move. And here you go. In comes a Thor. A Thor, however, quickly getting destroyed as the Marines now trying to run away. The Marines are splitting up very nicely. The Mutilus now being forced to pull back. And wow, what a devastating blow. The resources now evened up. So Stefano definitely in trouble. But 30 Zerglings and 11 Mutilus now being re queued up. So essentially, uh, what is that, 1,200 re resources there, about uh, 750 resources there. So a, a 2,000 resource army currently in production. Burrow now being researched as well. As we are still waiting to get more spawn larva, as we are now out of minerals and resources. So and Kaz now fighting his way back into this game, and you may, um, people may argue that this this is such a big issue with uh, Marines. But those Marines, you have to remember, are currently upgraded 2-1 against 1-1 one, one upgraded units. The Mutilists do not have any armor upgrades at all. So those uh, those Mutilists are essentially taking 33% more damage than they normally would at this stage in the game. But Kaz does going to have one issue here. This command center now getting um, sniped and picked down already. Marines are trying to stim over in time. SCVs are going to get destroyed as that chain damage coming into play. And the Mutal is finally able to back off some losses there. Let's take a look at the resources. Lost 21 resources versus 1. And I need to hit E so I do not follow the camera movement of Kaz. Back here, Zergling still being uh, macroed around, and you can st now see once again that Stefano has a very, very small, um, uh, now a pretty decent size army lead. 750 total resources as those Mutilus trying to come in, trying to get some damage over here. Are they going to be able to get any serious damage at all? Doesn't look like it. Oh, the Mutilus getting torn apart by the Longboat missiles and the Marines. So the Mutilus just doing a flyby, and wow, it, yeah, the pattern is full. And yeah, uh, Stefano thinking that, yeah, um, if anyone, uh, uh, negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. If anyone actually gets 
um, that shout out or that call out, you are as old as I am. And anyway, Stefano um, with the Mutalist, the, Mar uh, the Zerglings, and the Banelings now on that low ground. And so much damage dealt by those flyby Mutalists. As those Marines now coming in. Siege tanks, Marines now once again going to try to re-siege up. The Banelings now rolling through. And a lot of Marines now desperately trying to run away. And Stefano in a lot of trouble. But that is a lot of Banelings. Oh my goodness, how many Banelings was that? I gotta rewind. I want to see how many Banelings that was at the start of that battle. 69 Banelings. Uh, that's gonna blow this army apart. As those Banelings are just gonna come in and just try to get as much damage as possible. The Marines now desperately trying to run away. But the Siege Tanks and, and the Marines all falling apart there. And many Marines have been destroyed. Now you can see 2700, 1350 against 400, 400. But a lot of Zerglings now once again in production. One of the benefits of Banelings that is not often discussed is that Banelings only cost a half a larva. So if you're wondering, wow, how is he able to get up to 69 Banelings? 60, um, Banelings only, cast, um, only needing half a larva, but they essentially cost more than a Marine. So um, I, I think it's actually possible the, the the largest resource army you can have in a game is... 200 food of banelings um so 400 banelings all at 75 resources each um i believe that is actually no um 75 resources each no 400 banelings at 700 resources each i believe that's about 3,000 and oh banelings acting as a deadly landman is it gonna happen is it gonna happen wait for it there you go the marines all de de just completely detonated only about four, five of those banelings actually needed to detonate in order to destroy that and i think that's actually what it was to actually destroy the siege tanks as well but that was just a beautiful uh, landmine trap there zerglings now trying to run back over here there are some banelings and some zerglings here the thor is now going to try to come in position but there are not that many marines and that is going to be a problem for that very heavy Zergling army, which will soon be coming in and most likely flanking here. Marines are now trying to come in in transition. Zerglings now coming in. The swarm. Here comes the Banelings. Zerglings able to tear this army apart. Banelings now melting away multiple Marines once again. And the Mutalist coming in even more. Down goes the army of Kaz. And wow, nicely done. Army of Stefano now significantly larger than Kaz. And really, I've, it's really been Stefano out macroweed running off of six bases, which or, or having six bases and seven hatcheries, which is keeping him in this game, expanding all across the map and staying up on top of uh, on top of resources in multiple locations. Eventually, Kaz needs to start trying to establish another expansion here. Otherwise, he's just gonna run out of minerals. His natural expansion already looking very, very sparse as the drone's now being transferred to a new base. So it's gonna be four full bases uh, compared to two full bases. No, compared to only one and a half full bases in just a moment. And Stefano now sitting on an army size of what, six or 7,000 resource army and that is absolutely huge that almost makes me think that my calculations are corrupt um, are incorrect for the other anyways zerglings now coming in gonna surround uh yeah 150 um, just gonna surround here destroy multiple locations once again banelings gonna melt more units and there's kaz with the gg so kaz losing a game to stefano here on tall dream altar and that means that game three will be played. I did cast these games out of order, so I do know the next game is on Neil Enigma. Uh, stay tuned for that game. I will still be posting these games up in order for you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed this game between Empire Kaz and Millennium Stefano here on Tall Dream Altar. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And oh... A tournament update for everyone who's been asking me where's my tournament um, I'll probably do another tournament update as well at the beginning of 746 the games have not yet been submitted to me so I know a lot of you guys are like oh I want to see those tournaments and they will be up another thing I know a lot of you guys want to see the game as quickly as quickly as possible because of that I will be um, doing a I have opened up a Justin TV um, account it is Crota TV 
Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, I am also on the Team Liquid site as well. So when I am live streaming, hopefully that will be updated. I'm moving away from live stream as live stream. Um, apparently a lot of you guys don't like live stream. So like, okay, I'll move to Justin TV. I did upgrade it. So I, um, I did upgrade the account as well. Thank you for all you donators out there. And if you guys would like to donate, not saying that you have to, but it does help with a lot of a lot of the equipment, a lot of the time, um, also paying for daycare, um, as my darling Aria. I digress. I'm a proud father. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, if you would like to donate, there is a link on my channel page. Go ahead and just click it. It's on the left side. It says donations, if you insist. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay. And I purposely kind of ranted a little bit longer just so you guys wouldn't know when the game exactly ended. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you guys on Battle.net.